know, we've all heard a thousand times about the power of relationships, saw it, gone to meetings, had people like me talk your ear off about it. So tonight, instead of talking about it, let's demonstrate it. What I need you to do is trust and rely on each other, lean in and imagine what we can accomplish together. That's the power of teamwork and it starts right now. I want to wake up the audience. I want to wake up your audience, engage their hearts and minds, have their emotions fully locked in so that the words that I say and the ideas that I express will affect them on a cellular level. Not just here, here. It's Joshua Seth. Mentalist uh, Joshua Seth. Mentalist, best-selling author and world-renowned voice actor. Anything we do, we have to find our focus, and when we do that, we can achieve amazing things. Yet, there are constant distractions, technological distractions, pulling our focus in a million directions at once. I, mean, I think this is the major issue that we're all facing these days, mm -hmm. especially since the advent of the smartphone. This is like a muscle that needs to be exercised, and, and we're losing that capacity, and with it, the capacity to do deep work because of never unplugging and the constant distractions that are always coming at us. To do anything well, you have to focus your mind. And when you can focus your mind, you can do amazing things. Ideas create innovation. All creativity is, is taking two pre-existing ideas and putting them together to form something new. Instead of resisting the change, instead of trying to resist this great wave of innovation that is coming crashing down over all of us, over all our business enterprises, over our everything in our entire lives, we can simply choose to change our frame of mind and redirect our thinking in a way that allows us to creatively innovate. What I love about Josh is he totally customizes it. Um, he's real. He's not out there to do his own shtick. And he also knows the event is not about him. It's about me or it's about my clients. It's their event. And so he completely enhances it. Stand up for the lucky person and grab that. You were selected randomly by Beach Ball, as were three other members of the audience. One of these gentlemen identified Brazil as the place that he'd like to go to on a dream vacation. Another gentleman out there said he bumped into, was it Matt Damon? And then Matt Damon bought him vodka tonics. I now direct your attention back. There's an ATA case suspended over the stage. I dreamed we went to Brazil with Matt Damon drinking vodka tonics. A box come down from the ceiling and told a story that was already established in the crowd. I was totally hooked and hung on every word that he said. It was amazing. It was awesome. It was unbelievable. I definitely want to better next event. What I demonstrate in my keynote performances are the secrets to making the impossible possible. How to think differently, predict the future by creating it. Well, I was just recently the opening keynote speaker at Uber's Global Innovation Conference. And I pointed out to them that the same technology, the same innovative spirit that allowed them to disrupt the taxi cab industry, where I went to college in New York City, we used to always say, oh, cab, right? A taxi medallion, as recently as five years ago, was valued at a million dollars for a single taxi medallion. Now they're being auctioned off for less than 200,000. Because of the disruptive innovation, of taking two separate ideas, software apps and taxi services, and bringing them together as Uber did. But as I told my senior leadership, that same innovative spirit that allowed them to disrupt the taxi cab industry is the same thing that can disrupt them themselves if they don't keep that culture of innovation and mental flexibility alive. We're not in an information economy anymore. How can we be? when all we have to do is ask Siri, ask Alexa, ask Google for the answer, and boom, the answer to our question appears. Now, what has changed without our even noticing is that we've moved from the information economy into an idea economy. Now, there's great power in that because all of us are born as creative individuals. All of us have a creative capacity to innovate our way out of any situation and find solutions once we learn to think in that direction. Because what Nobel Prize winning scientists have in common that their non-Nobel Prize winning peers don't is magic. Nobel Prize winning scientists are more than 12 times as likely as their peers to engage in the creative hobby of magic. Now why is that? It's because in this particular art form, you start with the impossible and reverse engineer your way back to what is possible. 
That's how tricks are invented. That's how routines are formed. We think, oh, wouldn't it be great to be able to do this? And how do we get there from here? If you saw my show the other night, I did an experiment where I was back to back with another lady and we both had, had books, right? Just think it, just think the first, is that an I? Yeah. Is that word into? Yeah. Amazing! <laughs> And it was funny to all of you, you had a completely different perspective from her. You knew exactly how it was done. You could see inside my mind, in a way, because I was exposing the method to you. But to her, because she was back to back with me, she had a completely different perspective. And to her, the whole sequence was magical. Magic is simply a problem that you cannot solve. It becomes science once you know the method. And then much less amazing, but much more accessible. I think they're on something here. I think these Nobel Prize winning scientists realize a fundamental truth about life, which is that anything is possible. Once you open your mind to it, once you think anything is possible, then the solutions begin to appear.